Thanks, Natalie. Uh, we're going to talk about elections now, uh, not here in the UK, but in the US. The businessman Michael Bloomberg has announced that he is running for the Democratic nomination for president. If successful, he will take on Donald Trump next November in the race for the White House. The former New York mayor has entered the race just 10 weeks before primary voting begins. So is he the man who can beat Donald Trump. Joining me now, Michael Bloomberg's former pollster, Bernard Whitman, and the Conservative commentator, Amari Faulkner. Gentlemen, good afternoon to you both. Good afternoon. Um, good afternoon. So, <laughs> and I'll come to you first, if I may, uh, Bernard. Um, what can you tell us about Michael Bloomberg? He's not a name that's too familiar uh, over in the UK. Uh, they might recognise the Bloomberg name from the news organisation and such. Uh, but he's actually not that well known outside of New York to everyday Americans. Well, I think that that is quickly going to change. I mean, Michael Bloomberg has an extraordinary background. He brought the city together after 9-11. He served as mayor for 12 years in the largest and most diverse city in the entire country. Uh, he brought his leadership to help create jobs and bring New Yorkers together. And I think that he adds a fresh dimension to this race, which I think has, honestly has been lacking to some degree. I mean, his signature issues of climate change and gun safety has helped win the hearts and minds of millions of Americans around the country. Uh, he invested a tremendous amount in the House elections in 2016, which helped flip the House, uh, 2018, which helped flip the House uh, to the Democrats, and also spent uh, a lot of money and time and energy in Virginia, where he helped flip the General Assembly on, on gun safety. So I think he's going to bring a fresh perspective and something that I think uh, Democrats and independents across the board are going to be quite excited about. Um, Amari, I'll bring you in here. I mean, this all sounds a bit familiar, doesn't it? Older, white, rich man, big deal in New York, heading for the White House. How much of a chance do you think that Michael Bloomberg has? He's got to get the Democratic nomination first, and that's already a crowded field. Absolutely. You're, you're spot on. It's a, it's a very crowded field. And I think his entrance into the race really shows one thing is that the Democratic Party does not really have a pulse on its, um, on its voters and who they want to lead their particular party. Uh, Michael Bloomberg has, you know, taken a back seat for, for many, many years in politics and he's been a, a huge donor, of course. But again, I think he's out of touch with what, what Americans that are sitting around their tables are thinking about on a day-to-day -day basis, such as how to pay their bills, how to, uh, you know, find better jobs to support their families to achieve the American dream. And Michael Bloomberg just does not have that connectivity uh, with voters as well. So as we see, the Democrat Party is really just a party that's trying to find itself, which means trying to find a person that can lead them. And they think maybe Michael Bloomberg will be that person, but I, I highly doubt it. I think we'll see, you know, three to six more uh, front runners before uh, the next few months. Uh, that's interesting. And Bernard, just how relatable is Michael Bloomberg? I mean, I put it to Amari there that, you know, he's a similar age to Donald Trump. He's white. He's very rich. He's from New York. It seems like same, same if those two were to go head to head for the White House. He says he is the only man that can take on Donald Trump. How do you differentiate between the two? Well, I mean, I, I think, first of all, I couldn't disagree with Amari more. I mean, I think, first of all, he uh, created thousands of jobs as mayor of New York City. He brought New Yorkers together. And he cares deeply and has experience in actually building businesses. He came from very humble beginnings. So, I mean, I think many Americans can appreciate and associate with that. And unlike Donald Trump, he actually is the real deal. He actually creates jobs and he cares deeply about it and has spent decades and decades of his time and money and energy in two issues that are sorely lacking, honestly, from the Democratic debate that primary voters uh, across the Democratic Party care greatly about. And that is gun safety and climate change. Gun safety and climate change continue to rank very, very high, just under uh, jobs and health care. And I think Michael Bloomberg has shown that he is really the only candidate uh, that has made a centerpiece of his platform uh, to fight climate change and to fight for gun safety. So I think between that, his ability to create jobs, proven ability to create jobs uh, at Bloomberg LP, uh, and his ability to bring people together in the face of a horrific act of 9-11, I think, set him apart from the field and immediately place him as one of the top contenders. Okay, that's interesting, uh, uh, Mari. And Bernard, they're talking about his stance on climate change and gun control being different to that of Donald Trump. However, he is a billionaire. He's the fourth richest man in America. I mean, this comes after months of debate over wealth inequality in the United States. Are those kind of messages going to get through when people look at this candidate for the White House and all they can see is a multi-billionaire? 
Absolutely. Well, I, mean, I, I, do not, I, I don't think those messages will get across the American people. Um, I came from the inner cities here in the United States, and I understand the types of people and types of candidates that can really tug at the strings and the heartbeat of Americans. And one thing I would say, if we would go back to 2016 election, that's exactly what President Donald Trump did is that he talked to Americans about the issues that are impacting their communities. He talked to them about jobs. He talked to them about workforce development. He talked to them about uh, the things that every American is thinking about, again, around their kitchen tables. Um, our environment is extremely important. Uh, it's an area that we live in, and we must do everything that we can do to protect it. But at the end of the day, you know, we need to see more people being able to ascend to achieve their American dreams. And that's one thing Michael Bloomberg has not touched on. Uh, he has touched on very divisive issues that, quite frankly, are dividing our country. And that's the reason why we see a Democratic Party today that's quite divided. And they don't know who they want to lead. They're continuously going further and further to the left. Uh, they're continuously focusing on socialist po uh, policy. <laughs> Things that represent big government, and, and that's not what everyday Americans are looking for. Everyday Americans are looking to take care of their children, uh, to make sure their children are ed educated, and make sure their children have the opportunity to leave a better future than the one that they have today. Yeah, that's interesting. Bernard, how is uh, Michael Bloomberg going to touch into what ordinary, everyday American Americans want? How is he going to get that common touch? Because Donald Trump very much played into a, a climate at the time in 2016 of um, fears over immigration and jobs, make America great again. He really tapped into that. What's Michael Bloomberg going to tap into to cut well, through? Well, look, I don't... I I don't disagree that, that Donald Trump actually leveraged racial fears, racial hatred, concern, anxiety, fears very successfully. The challenge and the problem for Donald Trump is he hasn't delivered on economic growth at all. The whole country's in worse shape than it was. Trade is in worse shape. Farmers are in worse shape. The middle class did not get a tax cut. Health care prices have skyrocketed. So I think, uh, and the, I would disagree with Amari again, because two issues that actually unite Americans, not just the Democratic Party, not just the Senate, but unite Americans is the belief in having to do something about climate change, that climate change is real, caused by humans, and the belief that we need to have proper gun safety measures to, to uh, limit this gun violence, limit our kids being killed all across the country. Majority, strong majorities of people support on both sides now, Mike Bloomberg's perspective and, and uh, policies on both climate change and gun safety. And I think that's going to bring people together, as well as his record in creating jobs. I mean, the difference between Mike Bloomberg and Donald Trump, first of all, Mike Bloomberg is a real billionaire. Donald Trump's a fake billionaire. And money aside, uh, he actually has a record of getting things done instead of actually just working in his own corrupt self-interest. Okay, Bernard Whitman, uh, former pollster uh, for Michael Bloomberg, thank you. And uh, Mari uh, Faulkner, conservative commentator, thank you for your thoughts this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.